Happy holidays, everybody. What, what, wait a minute. Something is missing. I got it. Bam! Yes, it's my favorite jacket, Batman jacket. So you know what that means. Time for the third annual top 10 best list of 2017. Seen so many movies this year. Literally had to like really narrow it down because I've seen a lot of good movies. Some movies did not get on the list, but that top 10 worst list. <laughs> Woo. That is coming tomorrow, so be on the lookout for that. But right now, we're going to get into this 2017 Top 10 Best List. It's been a great year for movies all around. I had a great time with everything I've seen this year. A lot of highs, a lot of good stuff. A lot of stuff that made me be like, holy shit, that yes, that was, that was the shit. So without further ado, I know you're waiting for it. Let's just get into it. Let's get into my personal Top 10 Best List of 2017. <laughs> Coming in at number 10, I didn't do a review for this movie, literally, it's like the one movie I regret not doing a review for, and I could have seen it early, but I was just like, this is not gonna be good. Turned out it was amazing, I loved it, and that movie is definitely Girls Trip. Hands down, the best comedy I've seen this whole year. I so regret not seeing this in theaters when I had the chance to see the screening for it, because it was so good. Literally, all the actors in it, they were amazing. The comedy was just spot on. Like, it was just like, it made me laugh so hard. I cried, I fell out of my seat. I loved it girls trip so whenever you can make me be like i regret not going to that screening i'm like yes i'm forever and now my faith in comedies has been renewed and girls trip loved it <laughs> coming up number nine you might be a little like oh what this is kind of low on the list but hey this is this is how we roll this year this is how it's going down number nine is going to actually be spider-man homecoming this is spider-man's return to the mcu we i love how he was integrated in it with civil war and now he had his own movie i really liked and enjoyed spider-man homecoming it was not iron man 4 like everyone was worried about Tom Holland is an amazing Spider-Man. I can't wait to see him in Avengers Infinity War. He's gonna freaking kill it. I like the dynamic, I like the world that they made for Peter Parker into the MCU and everything. And his chemistry with Tony Stark and, and the other actors and actresses in the movie was actually really good. And Willie Weld choreographed the dynamic. Him swinging around the Spider-Man stuff, that's always cool too. It's just like, and of course, I gotta praise real quick, Michael Keaton as the vulture. Michael Keaton this year, on fire, man. And we can bring him back for Spider-Man Homecoming too. That would, that would be amazing. We can all agree. That would be amazing. So with that being said, Spider-Man Homecoming is definitely number nine on the top 10 best list. Number eight this time. Mm, this was another movie I saw earlier this year. I was like, I don't know about this. Could be bad. But I ended up walking out of it like, holy shit. That was actually really good. Those are the best movies to see. And number eight is going to be Get Out. Now, I remember seeing this movie in the screen. And it was just like, okay, let's just sit through this. It's going to be one of those, like, I'm interested in this movie because the colors are very vague and shit. And it's got a black actor and then you know i love black leads yeah walked out of it just like oh my god that was actually really good it was one of the best psychological thrillers i've seen this year and then a couple of years back it was really good and one of the things i love the most when you have a main character actually does shit that us audience people would do in situations like this and he nailed it spot on i'm just saying that every black person in a situation would do what this guy did i still remember that scene the movie was just like hand me the keys and you just know that the girl his girlfriend everything and on it just like hand me the fucking Key. And then my man just jumps out the window like, fuck this, I'm out. I just, get out. You get the slow clap, because you are my number eight on the top 10 best list. <laughs> number seven, this got a little bit up more than Get Out, because this one of the movies I knew was going to be good when I walked through it. So I know when a movie's going to be good, I was like, okay, this is this is it. Number seven for me is going to be John Wick 2. But Keanu Reeves has already cemented his role as John Wick, the boogeyman and everything. I loved this movie. I liked it more than the sec first one, because I felt like this was like a good proper sequel. It just ups everything up. Ups the blood. Ups the body. Ups everything. I know it does have more or less the story element, like the, you know, the heart that the first movie had with the dog and everything and everything. Yeah, but it doesn't stop that, because I feel like this movie grows on the ever-expanding world that is John Wick and this world of master assassins and shit like that. Yeah, the action was great. Keanu Reeves is amazing and everything, and I just love how the movie ended and where it's going to go in the third and final chapter and everything. I'm so pumped to see that. I just know that Keanu Reeves is going to just massacre everybody. It's just going to be nuts. So, yes, John Wick 2 is definitely one of my favorite movies of this year. Number seven. <laughs> Coming on number six, another movie I was like, mm, how could this go? This could be back. How can they do this? How can they pull this off? Pull it off pretty good. So I'm going to say that number six is going to be 
Fate of the Furious. The last Fast Furious movie made my top 10 2015 best list, and I'm like, yeah, how can they proceed and make another good movie without Paul Walker, R.I.P.? And I ended up doing it because I just felt like the chemistry with all the actors and everything, Jason Statham and The Rock together, uh, match made in heaven, love that. I think they're getting their own spinoff, and that would be great too, but it's just like, the I just like the story that they kept progressing more with the Fate of the Furious movie, and I just really upped the carnage, upped the craziness and everything, I like that shit. Yeah, Dama Toretto and his crew and everything, that was all about the family. I still am along for the ride for this Fate of the Furious movie that they're doing. They're gonna make two more of them. They're gonna go in space and shit like that. It's gonna probably be my like, yeah, let's pump the brakes. But Fate of the Furious was a very enjoyable, fast-paced April movie. I always see the Fate of the Furious movies as like the pinnacle of spring movies. When you see a Fate of the Furious movie, you know it's spring. So yes, definitely number six for me. <laughs> Yeah, get down to the top five, okay. It might be a little controversial, but I'm going to clear the air and tell you why. Number five for me is going to be Justice League. I know people are just like, that movie was bad. I know why do people like that? I'm going to say for me, Justice League did just what it needed to do. It needed to just bring together Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Flash, bring them together in one movie, and they did that. I'm going to say and recognize, I know that the Snyder cut of this movie is probably the more superior version because I felt like there are things that were taken out of the movie that just like you can tell it's cut. There are a lot of things in the movie that are just not there that should be explained, like, you know, why, like, how does Superman get his cape back? A lot of scenes in the trailer that were not in the actual movie. Cyborg's backstory, what happened to him? And Andrew Miller's backstory, what happened to him? There's like a lot of stuff I realized is missing from this movie, but I feel like the version we got for the theatrical cut was pretty serviceable in what it did. And that just bring the league together and then take out Steppenwolf and everything and expand even more on the DC Cinematic Universe. I know DC is in a spot where it's just like, it's, the future's uncertain, but for right now, I'm gonna say that Jet to Leave for me was a pretty enjoyable movie. It did what he needed to do. It brought Superman back and made Superman smile even though he had a fake mustache. And I don't care. I, I'm still insane. I enjoyed it as a movie and that's why it's only number five. There's still four more movies I felt were better than Justice League. <laughs> Tell me number four, my another controversial one, but I think it's well merited. This is yeah. What's number four for me is going to be Star Wars: The Last Jedi. And now for me, a little backstory: I didn't see any trailers for this movie at all. I didn't see no trailer for the whole year for this movie. So going into it, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know no scenes. So I was able to just go into it blind and fresh, and I felt like that enhanced the experience for me. Probably not so much for you, because you're just like, yeah, Luke Skywalker died, and Snoke died. It's just a lot of bullshit. And call that from none of that. I was just like, oh shit, Snoke died. Holy shit. This Luke Skywalker died and everything. I heard there was rumors he might die because it's the second movie, so you know, you gotta have somebody die and shit. Yeah, I know a lot of people are just like, it's not as good as it, you know, it could be. It's like a divide with critics. It's like, oh, we love it. Fans are like, oh, we hate it. And maybe episode nine will be better. And I just feel like, yeah, I hear the cries. I'm just going off of my opinion. I felt like it was a pretty the enjoyable movie for what it was and what they're going for for the second act in this Star Wars new trilogy they're going for. I did enjoy a lot of stuff in it. And maybe that benefits because I didn't see no trailer, I didn't see any footage, I didn't see nothing about this movie going to it. So I'm gonna walk out of it and just be like, well, psh, to me it was good, you know. All in all, still a pretty enjoyable movie. There are three movies I like more than Flash Jedi, so let's get into that. <laughs> and now we're in the top three movies of the year. And number three for me is definitely going to be Wonder Woman. And Wonder Woman for me just absolutely did it because it was the first Wonder Woman movie we've seen in a long time. I feel like Wonder Woman's movie is what is pretty much pioneering this movement for female leads to just fucking dominate the shit. Like a girl Doc killed it as Wonder Woman. I love everything about the movie. Love the message, love the themes, love, you know, everything this whole movie is about and behind. Props to the female directors that did this movie. Can't think of her name off top, but I just loved everything about Wonder Woman. I love the mythology of the action. I love it. I love the chemistry between Gail Gadot and Chris Pine. Wonder Woman and Steve Trevor. It's everything about this movie just really just expanded the DC universe even more. And it's one movie I could say that actually helped another movie. Because I really walked out of it and was just like, you know what, seeing this movie, I kind of appreciate Batman v Superman a little bit more. Because now Wonder Woman doesn't feel so forced to change the movie. Doesn't feel like she's just in there to be in there. Felt like she actually had a perfect, perfect like she was there for a reason. And why she like just came back from exile to help Batman and Superman take out, you know, Ninja Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. But with all that being said, Wonder Woman is definitely my number three favorite movie of 2017. And there are two more that are better than that. But here we go. Coming at number two, this movie, another one, is just a surprise hit. Whenever a movie can surprise me, whenever I think, like, this might be bad, but ends up knocking my socks off and making me eat shit because it was actually really good, then it gives it props. Um, that movie is going to be 
Coco. Now, you cannot have a top 10 best movies list, apparently, without some type of Disney movie getting on it, because Coco was absolutely amazingly great. I had my reserves of this movie. I was just like, Coco, I, this isn't original property. It's not, you know, a franchise or nothing like that. So it was just like, mm, I don't know. No, but walked out of it just like, I'm tearing up. Uh, this movie just hit me in the core a lot of times. Oh my God. I was so good. The animation is amazing. The story is amazing. The characters you just fall in love with and just the themes and the messages behind it is just so it's so good and it was just this one section in the movie with the grandmother and everything that just literally just like it just melted my heart because it you know reminded me of my grandmother r.i.p it was just so touching and so warming i just couldn't help but like tear up it's just like ah, i'm not made of stone i love this movie so definitely coco is my number two favorite movie of the year but there's one movie more that just trumped it and here it is <laughs> Coming in, and I number one movie of the year is my number one summer movie, but now <laughs> grew to my number one movie of the year. No surprise, because this is my number one movie of 2014, and now its sequel is now number one in 2017. That movie is, without a doubt, War for the Planet of the Apes. The concluding chapter of this Planet of the Apes new trilogy reboot that they're doing, it was absolutely great. Oh my god, Andy Serkis is just amazing as Caesar. Just, just, just everything about the movie just fucking works. The themes, the conflict, the emotion, the tragic, just everything just hits you right here. It's so good. So you've been following Caesar from the first movie, from the second movie, of this movie. Just seeing that growth and evolution is just mind-blowingly great. This movie is a good size installment in a trilogy that's just gonna go up there with some of the best trilogies we've had in a long time. I can't think of any other movies more or less that have three solid great movies that are just like, I could watch each one of these and they're all fucking great. The motion capture of CGI in the movie is just freaking bar none. Just like, this should be the standard when it comes to movies like this. So it's just War of the Apes. I love the last movie. That was my top 10 of 20. That was my number one of 2014. And now we've got, got War for the Planet of the Apes with my number one movie of 2017. So no more Planet of the Apes movies are going to be making my top 10 list for a while. So here we go. So there you go, guys. That's my top 10 best movies of 2017. I hope you liked it. What is your top 10 best list? Whatever it is. If you don't like my list, then I'm, I'm sorry. But it's all opinions, guys. The internet. It's all about opinions. It's all about what you like. Whatever your top 10 list is, put in the comments below. Let's just talk about it. And tomorrow, I will be dropping the top 10 worst movie list. Watch out for that shit. It's, it's going to be good. Here they come, yo.